Here's our brand new AGPM Predator pressure washer and we'll be showing you guys how to build your own today. Obviously we're starting off with the Predator 670. As you can see here, I just purchased this direct through Harbor Freight. Make sure you're getting that 20 or 25% off coupon, whatever special they have running. Uh, I got this at the time of filming for about 830 bucks. So that's a solid deal for this class of engine. So next I paired this with a KCA 077 skid from Pressure Pro. Uh, I actually purchased through SLE Equipment, so I'll link that down in the description. And this particular skid is aluminum, which is nice, so we don't have to worry about rust. But it's also designed for the gear drive, so that's what we'll be using for this build. Uh, I didn't want to do the belt drive just because of issues with, or potential issues with misalignment and, you know, having to worry about belt tension and a belt shearing off in the middle of a job. I've ran gear gear drives in the past and they're pretty much dead reliable. So even if I do have to change these gears out after like, you know, a thousand hours or a couple thousand hours, I'll be a happy man. So anyways, the mounting hardware for the engine actually comes with the Predator pressure washer. So it'll be bolted through a little piece of plywood. So you can just take that off and then uh, mount it to your skid as shown. Do get somebody to help you with lifting this because it is kind of a pain in the butt on its own. It's just awkward. Uh, but I actually swapped out the nuts that came with this for some nylon mock nuts. Those are just M8s. You can purchase those at Amazon or at your local hardware store. But I just use nylon for all the vibrations. That way it's not coming loose over time. So step one of this build after we get our engine all fully secured is going to be attaching our gear drive. So this is a one inch keyed shaft and this is the receiver for the one inch keyed shaft. You can see that little keyway right there. So what we'll be doing is taking some nickel anti-seize. I'm using some Permatex brand and as you can see it kind of exploded when I opened it. So we're just going to be applying anti-seize to the shaft pretty generously to make sure that we got uh, you know good coverage and what this will do for you is hopefully when you have to take this apart for maintenance down the road is that this will hopefully make sure that this shaft isn't seized up and basically rusted on there obviously it's in a perfect world because that can still happen even with the anises so i'm just applying a generous amount there next up i want to put a little bit on the keyway too just so that we got uh, you know potential to remove that down the road as well and i don't like putting anti seeds on my hands so i'm wearing some little nitrile gloves so you can put the key shaft in the keyway then i'm actually going to take a little zip tie and do the zip tie trick here so if you've never seen this before i'm just tightening the zip tie back against the key shaft so that way when i'm trying to put this uh, gear reduction on that it's not going to slide the shaft off as I'm trying to put it on. So next step would be to line that up. There we go. So now that I've actually got the gear, the shaft on there, uh, what I'm going to do is cut that zip tie off. So I'm just taking a pair of side cuts, snip that zip tie right off there, and then we can slide our gear reduction the rest of the way on. Uh, before I go too much further, so this gear reduction is going to have just a plug at the top. I think technically this is reversible, but I want my sight glass out this way anyway, so I'm going to leave it as is. But this will just be a plug that you'll replace with your oil cap, and then the bottom is just a drain plug. Uh, I'm not going to put like a drain plug extension on the gear reduction, just because you can get you know, a nice like aluminum foil or shallow drain pan in there. I've never had any problems with that in the past. So I'm gonna leave that as is. Next step will be to slide this all the way on here. And then we have a couple different mounting options. Uh, I'm gonna use the larger bolts that came with it to tighten to the back of the engine. Then these do have a little locking washer as well. Uh, before I forget, I am going to put some just blue thread locker on there. I really like the Permatex brand 
again just because it's like a glue stick so you just twist this and it comes out real nice and easy you can wear gloves for this as well but this stuff isn't kind of as nasty as anti-seize is now with all four of those bolts started as shown you can just tighten them down it's a i believe an m8 bolt so it's a 14 mil socket uh, you will have to use a wrench for this back one just because of the location with the gear reduction once our gear reduction is finally locked into place we can move on to start prepping the pump so we'll be using a general pump tsf 2021 for this build it's an eight gallon minute pump and these brackets are actually designed i believe for the belt drive version because it mounts flat to this kid but i'm going to be using these for uh, pump support although technically you don't need pump support this is about a 70 pound pump so it is very heavy and if if possible i'd like to support that so I took some measurements prior to this build and I believe these inch and a quarter standoffs that I found will work just perfect for giving this pump a little bit of support. Uh, we have ran them on our 6.8 gallon a minute build without the pump support at all and I've had no issues in almost two years of running the thing. So probably an optional step, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for these bolts, take them out and put a little bit of thread lock on them and then tighten them back down. All right, next up we are ready to prep our pump shaft. So this is actually going to require removing these four bolts and then we'll have to mount this cover plate on. So those will replace those four bolts and create that seal with that O-ring. And then we can put our gear on the end of the shaft and then that's ready to mate up to our um, actual gear reduction. So first things first, I'll loosen these four bolts. All right, now that we've got, now that we've got these four bolts loosened from the pump, we can go ahead and put on our cover plate. So we won't be reusing those four bolts. So you can just get rid of them or save them for some other time. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of thread locker on these. And then we also do have a tiny o-ring so it'll be the seal in your pump oil so make sure that that is still in place on all four of these bolts and then there's actually an o-ring gasket to help seal this surface so this is what's mounting up to your pump so again that's to help keep the oil in it's so what we we'll want to do before we put this o-ring back is put a little bit of super lube o-ring silicone lubricant on it uh, you, you don't have to buy the super lube brand i just had this already and Tend to like it it's a good product compared to some of the other silicones so i'll just put a little bit on and then work that around with my fingers so the silicone actually does help create a good positive seal once we've got good coverage of that i can go ahead and put that back in its channel make sure that you got that good and seated before we put this part back on so what I like to do when I'm working with the O-rings is just run my finger around them once I think I finally have it seated to make sure that it's seated fully in the channel. All right, so with Loctite on, we're gonna go ahead and cinch these bolts down. So since there's a gasket behind this, you don't wanna tighten one side way down and kind of draw it off center because you can roll your gasket or even tear it. So I'm just bringing these down kind of to snug. Now that we've got this plate cinched all the way down, we can go ahead and start mounting our gear. So this gear is going to just mount directly to the shaft on the pump. So we'll want to put some anti-seize on the shaft before we put the gear on so that way we can get it off in the future. So this gear uh, set screw is going to require a four millimeter Allen head socket or Allen wrench, whichever you have. So I'm just going to get that started. And luckily this key is actually recessed into the shaft. So this one should be pretty easy to put on. We're actually gonna put the side that sticks out down. So towards the pump. And that from my measurements will make this line up perfectly with this other gear. So there we go. Then I'll have to rotate this up real quick to get this tightened down. 
So I want to get that good and tight, but I'm not trying to go too crazy because I don't want to snap my Allen wrench off, especially since I'm tightening with the ball end. All right, so we are basically ready to go ahead and make this pump up to this gearbox, but the last thing that we need to do is just lubricate this gasket with some silicone. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now that this is coated with a good bit of silicone, I can go ahead and put this back in. So this gear housing actually has some little teeth that hold the gasket in. So uh, they're spaced every like two inches maybe. So you can kind of just work your way around. Then that should just pop into place. So what I want to do now is just make sure I can run my finger all the way around the whole thing. Make sure that the gasket stays in place. So that feels pretty good and I think we're ready to attach the actual pump. I'll be honest, I ended up doing this off camera because it's a huge pain in the butt. Uh, what I realized is that these bolts, since they actually thread into this half that attaches to the pump of the gear housing, it would have actually been a lot easier to assemble the gear housing to the pump and then just put it on the keyed shaft of the engine uh, instead of doing it this way. The only reason for that is you're trying to hold like a 70 pound pump and then start a couple of these bolts, which I was able to do. I just supported, supported these uh, pump rests and then I was able to start a couple of the bolts and it, it really wasn't too bad. But if I was doing this again, I would probably do pump to uh, gear housing first. So anyways, I'm gonna finish snugging all these up and kind of same principle as we did the other. One, you kind of want to almost do like a star pattern, bring them all to snug. Just that way we're compressing that gasket nice and evenly. All right, so what ended up happening is that I had to get our pressure washer kind of finished up in a hurry so I couldn't film the rest of the build, but I wanted to at least show you guys how to do the rest. So, we'll start where we left off with the plumbing. On the high pressure side, we have a 3 8 male to male nipple that goes into our ZK1 flow sensitive unloader. I like these unloaders better than the uh, non-flow sensitive just because they're so much easier when you're on and off the trigger. They don't absolutely blow you back. Um, I do have a pressure gauge here that's just for setting up the unloader. So the way you do that by the way is just put your green tip on your wand and I like to do green tip and surface cleaner but then I'll loosen this back nut which is your lock nut and then you basically have somebody squeeze the trigger or be on the gun on the surface cleaner and then you dial this in to where this pressure reads 2500 psi so that's how you set your flow sensitive unloader and then that'll put you at a good pressure range for doing concrete so we just have our half inch bypass line coming off the unloader that's a female to male half inch barb and then just high pressure ag line running back up into our IBC tote then the high pressure side just goes out to our hose reel. You can see I definitely overordered on the length for the whip line, but it kind of worked out. Back to the pump. So like I mentioned, we only ended up using one leg for support, um, but it just kind of worked out because it really doesn't need a whole lot. It just needs a little bit. So anyways, back to our battery. So we've got our battery housed in just a little waterproof box, or water resistant, I should say. Then our positive and negative lines coming out, and then those run under our pressure washer to the back side. This is a little hard to get to zoom in and be focused, but you can see the bolt down there that holds the engine to the skid. That's what I have my negative for the battery, and actually for our 12 volt fuel pump as well. And then the positive for the starter, has just ran up to the starter terminal. This particular build, we needed a way to get the exhaust out just because of the orientation of this. So we had a uh, custom exhaust fabbed up and then that's just fiberglass tape. Coming down to our wiring. So this is the wiring for the switch. So if I turn this to on, this wire will actually be hot. By hot, I mean have electricity to it. In the off position it does not so that's what we use to wire in our 12 volt fuel pump so i just cut this yellow wire in half this white wire is the one that i added 
and then you just strip back the wire and run it into one of these Wago terminal box. These are super nice because if you ever need to swap it out, that's all you do. Just peel it back, pull the wire out, put the new one in, and you're good to go. So I'll turn that on. You can hear the fuel pump back off, fuel pump off. All right, the way that you start these is pretty simple. Just if it's cold start, choke all the way on, key switch to start with the throttle at about a third. Then if it's already hot, just no choke, just straight to start with, with the throttle still at a third or a half. For our fuel system, we have a nine gallon fuel tank and I just got this off Amazon. If you plan to use the same fuel cell, this is the little vent cap. So you just unscrew this so it's actually venting when you want to run. And then if, if it's hot, ideally you leave that open until the gas tank cools down because otherwise it'll kind of collapse. But when you're not using this at all, you just shut this, which basically seals the tank. So that's how that works. But that runs to our fuel pump, 12 volt inline fuel pump. Then this red wire is your positive. That runs up to that keyed switch. Your black wire goes to the frame ground on the uh, engine mount to the skid. And then that line, this is all 5 16 fuel line. And that just runs up to the stock uh, port. So this will just be, basically you just have this fuel filter there when it comes from the factory. So you just run your line straight up to it. So these Predators do come with a factory fuel pulse pump, but from everything I've heard, under load, they kind of tend to starve out for fuel. So just by adding the inline pump, you solve that problem. I didn't want to take out the factory pulse pump just because I didn't want to worry about it over flooding the engine. So I haven't ran into any issues yet, and I'm probably at about 40 hours on this thing. One important thing to note is that this pump actually comes pre-filled with uh, oil. I would obviously double check the one that you order, but ours was completely full. And then I just filled this up with some gear oil. I believe it's 80W90, but I'll pop that up on the screen in case I'm wrong. And then you just fill up your engine with whatever is recommended for your area. Alright, I hope you guys learned something, and that was our full 8 GPM pressure washer build.